Hey everyone, and welcome to our video series that invites experts in their field to share their stories and career insights. I'm Gabby, and in this episode, I'm joined by Patrick McKenna, a partner at Comeback Capital. I'm excited to ask Patrick for some advice for young professionals, and if we're lucky, Patrick is going to share one of his biggest career mistakes and the invaluable lesson he learned from it. Trust me, this is something you don't want to miss. We're very happy to have you here with us today, Patrick. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Of course, of course. So tell us a little bit about how you made your start and why you do what you do. Well, I didn't take a direct path to being an entrepreneur and starting a company. I actually started a very traditional career. I started in investment banking. I worked uh, at Morgan Stanley in mergers and acquisitions. And at one point I decided that that wasn't the future that I wanted to. So I, I made a big career change. I took a risk and I left New York and went out to Silicon Valley and joined a startup to kind of learn the startup business and, and launched my career that way. Well, a, a lot of people watching this video right now are in that place of trying to figure out how they're going to start their career, just even get a start on it. So do you have any advice to touch on that? I think it's really important to understand and really think about what motivates you. Mm -hmm. I've just found that, that I'm better at and I've worked around people are better at things when, when they really love what they're doing. And I don't mean like in a passion way, I mean they actually enjoy it. The company, the product, the problems. I've just found that that's a way for you to really differentiate yourself and be better at what you're doing. Yeah, it completes your identity. That's an excellent point. Uh, so you've been in the military. How did your military experience mold you into the person you are today? And also, what kind of lessons did you learn along the way that young professionals can relate to even though they're not in the military? The military experience is, is very unique. Yeah. And um, a lot of people who've served realize how difficult it is to kind of translate that experience to kind of the more commercial professional world. Um, so I love this question. So I, I, I you know, reflected back after many years and like, what are the things that I learned in the military that have served me well? And you know, it's being a self-starter. You know, in the mm -hmm. military, you really need to take responsibility. Um, completing tasks, like really being focused on the mission and completing tasks and being responsible for the outcome. Those are just really important three very specific things that you learn in the military that uh, that apply to any work that you're doing, whether you know it's a, in the creative field, whether it's in finance or as an entrepreneur. Absolutely, yeah, that responsibility. So a lot of your career has been rooted in investments and um, we're wondering how your process is in deciding to invest in someone. You know, I invest on the early stage, so mm -hmm. pre-seed, seed. So I'm talking to entrepreneurs when the idea is just forming. Mm -hmm. And what I know is that the business is going to change. Mm -hmm. The plan that they're pitching, the revenue that they have, the idea, it's going to change. So my, my, my mentality looking at it is to say, what is this entrepreneur, this person, what do they know that other people don't know? And where are they? Like when everything starts to change, are they going to see the world in a unique and different way? Because at this level, level of investing, it's about the people. So kind of stepping back to what I learned in the military, I think I can find that in people who had a lot of different experiences. Yeah. Like, and, and in entrepreneurship and startups, it's no different. Are you going to stay with the task? Are you going to mm -hmm. stay on top of it? Are you going to deliver? And then this other thing, are you going to be flexible? Awesome. So that's what makes a great entrepreneur is that flexibility and uh, mode of responsibility. Um, so on that note of investment, what kind of advice should you give to young professionals on how they should invest in themselves? So if, if you are starting out in your career, you're probably not going to start off at you know, 23 necessarily starting a company. Mm -hmm. You might, but you know, it's going to come along the way. So this is really important question. So what should you be doing in your first couple of jobs? at a school that are gonna set you up Absolutely. as an entrepreneur. So three really important things. One is focus on experience. Don't worry about the, the title. It's really not that important because you're not gonna be in that job for more than a couple years, so the title's less important. What are you gonna learn? What are you gonna be doing? Number two, I call it mastery. Be in the job so you can master something, a skill, whether it's in account management or if it's production or if it's fine, whatever it is, be in the role long enough that you can really get deep mastery. Because what I found, if you can do something really well, you could do a lot of other things really well, and you can learn those other things faster. And then number three, this is super important, realize that you're building your network. 
the people that you meet in your first job, one, two, three jobs, those first kind of five or six years out of school, not only are those going to be your best friends, likely, mm -hmm. they're going to be your business partners, whether you start a company with them, or you're going to be buying and selling products with yeah. them as you advance in your career. So think about those three things. Get experience, master a skill, and build your network. So you mentioned a network. Do you have any advice for people starting in their careers on how to build it, how to find people to mentor them if that's something they'd want to do? So this is such an important point, particularly early in your career. And I, I have two ways to think about your network. One is your lateral network. So there's other people at your level around the company. So say you're in product, you, sh you should be thinking like, who's in sales? Who's in engineering? Who's in account management? Look at the other groups around you and go and ask them to lunch. Be like, hey, um, Jennifer, um, you're a really great salesperson. I, I see your name on the board all the time. I'd love to get a coffee with you and learn about sales. You know, asking people questions is a really great way to get people talking. So first is your lateral network. And the other is kind of more the leadership network. And, you know, look around and say, you know, who might have a, a, a background that you have some connection to or you're interested in how they got where they are and start with a question like, you know, hey, Bill, um, I, I love that. Uh, I love hearing your updates at the company meeting. Uh, I'm really interested in, you know, how you came from X to Y. And I'd love to get a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes to stop by and and learn a little bit about your background. And so what is the two, the thing that ties those two together is asking questions. Mm. And I think a lot of young people underestimate the power of asking questions because it's, it's not a place of weakness to ask mm. a question. It's actually a place of strength and it shows curiosity. Were these things that you learned at, uh, from experience or was there something that you wish you would have known from a young age starting out that would have contributed to your, your success today? It's so hard to know. Yeah. Um, I probably wasn't the kid who was going to be the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like president of the finance club <laughs> in school. And I started off on Wall Street. It's a very traditional track, but I didn't like it enough to make the big change. And then I became an entrepreneur. I really felt more creative. And so it's, it's hard to know mm -hmm. what, I, what I told myself. Oh, you should be thinking about being an entrepreneur when you're, you know, 16 or 18 or 21. Or should I just be ex getting as many experiences as I could to set myself up for whatever, you know, the market was going to offer me? And so what I would say to myself as a younger person is uh, worry less. It's going to work out. <laughs> That's hard. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, and just, uh, you know, just collect as many experiences as you can so you can be pre prepared for whatever opportunity arises. Absolutely. That's great advice. And um one last thing, now mistakes. Nobody mm. likes them. Mm -mm. We've unfortunately all been through them at some point. You have? Oh <laughs> of course, yes. Perfect, so. No, no, I've made mistakes. And, you know, the important part is learning from them, right? Mm. So what was a significant mistake or failure in your life that kind of helped you uh, get to where you are today, that it was a building experience to your character, something that our young professionals can learn from as well? I think this is a really important question, and I'm going to be honest with an experience that I had that um, that surprised me at the time, and in, in retrospect, I think the decisions I made with this mistake really set up my career. Mm. Um, when I transitioned from banking to uh, startups, I went and worked for a company. I didn't start a company right away, so um, I joined a company, and the mistake I made, this is really interesting, is I actually took a role below my experience, oh, wow. and I didn't realize it. And so I thought it was a lateral move, but it was actually a position that was lower than the experience that I had. And my first instinct was, oh, you should go find another job because this isn't going to give you what you need. But as I got into it, I realized, actually, I'm going to learn so much from this experience. This is a great company. They're working on an important problem. And I gave myself three months to prove that I should be at the higher level. So I stayed with the job. And so I kind of came in as a senior manager and I thought I should have been a director when I got to the, to the company and I stayed with it and I worked really hard. And after three months, I presented why I should have the higher position. It turns out I was able to stay with the company and then get that higher position and become a director and stay there for two years in that position and learned everything that I needed to set me up for the company that I started. And so the lesson I learned from that mistake was, look, it doesn't always work out, but you really need to understand 
what company are you going to join, what your responsibilities and how they map to your career. And I made the mistake of not understanding what I was getting into. Everybody should really understand that. When you get into something, then you need to say, what did you learn from it and what can I learn? And for me, it was like, actually, I could still learn a lot from this role. And, and it also gave me a chance to step up and prove that I deserve the higher level. Mm -hmm. And so I gave myself a, you know, a 90 day window and it turned out that I was able to get that higher position and I am staying at the company for two years <laughs> and learning a tremendous amount. And if I had left, who knows what I'd have learned, but I wouldn't have been able to test uh, what I knew I thought I should be. So that is just so impressive that you were able to accomplish all of that in three months. Do you have any advice on how to make a case for what you were able to do if a young professional wants to do as you did? You know, the, the key thing to asking for and earning a promotion is to really understand the roles and responsibility of the position that you're aspiring to. To really look at it and think like, what does that role, does that person, not the individual person, like what does the person in that role, what do they need to do to be successful? What experiences, what responsibilities? And the, first of all is understanding it. The next is, this is, my, this is my guiding principle in life, just start doing it. Mm -hmm. like, like it turns out that when you're willing to do work, people are willing to let you do work. So in the case of my story, I saw the role and I knew it needed to be filled and I just started doing that role. I started acting in the role, not taking any positions, but I was standing in for the role that I wanted to be. And then in the end, I was already doing the job. Wow, that's so nice. And that makes me think of just be the, uh, do the role you want to be. And Bingo, yes. Yeah, do the role you want to be. Dress for the job you want, right? Yes. That's what I was thinking. That's of. <laughs> right, and everybody can do this. And even if you don't get the title, you're actually getting that experience. And for mm -hmm. young people, really understand the experience is more is the most important yes. thing. Thank you so much for your insight. We learned a lot and thank you. Happy to be here. If you found this video helpful, let us know by hitting the like button down below and subscribing to our channel right here for weekly career tips from Indeed. For more advice for when you're just starting out, check out this video and our full career tips playlist. Thanks for watching.